Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric, and today is Wednesday, the 10th of January. What a storm we had last night. Power out everywhere. Internet's down. Phone lines are down. So, you're probably not going to hear this until <laughs> probably a day or so later, because I'm not going to try uploading using my phone and my data. I usually use just the internet, so I'll have to wait and see how long it takes to get it back on. So I thought, because we're not even going to open the shop today. It's, I mean, I've got a generator down there, but most people in this area know me, and they'll see that my lights are on, my garage door is open, generator running. If they're having problems with the generator, they know they can just stop here or clods, and we will take care of them. Even if we have to make house calls. But the problem is, is we have no phone other than cell phone coverage. <laughs> So, trying to get a hold of us is kind of out of the question, too. But stay tuned. I got a nice show for today. <laughs> So welcome back yes yeah it started early last night I went to visit my wife over to the hospital and I left here at about 10 to 2 and it normally takes me about 30 minutes to get over there and I never made it there till 3 you know, and that's how hairy the roads were getting and the snow and slush and when I left to come home, you know, most of the traffic had come to like 25, 30 miles an hour, which was smart. Because, I mean, people don't know enough when to slow down when they're driving their vehicles on bad roads. See, I mean, we have this normal steps, right? We have to take us North Country guys, gals, and go from driving on nice clear roads where you got plenty of traction to driving on snow roads. It's a totally different way to drive, all right? You can't drive the same way. And when you're doing that, you have to give yourself plenty of leeway to stop if you have to stop. That means more room in between vehicles, right? And the biggest thing you have to learn and know is once you touch those brakes, you've lost all control. You have. I don't care how good your tires are. If you're on slush and stuff and you hit your brakes, you're going. You can't steer, you can't do anything. And on the way home, I see numerous vehicles off the side of the road where you could see they were getting too close to the car ahead of them and the car ahead of them had to stop and they went right off into the ditch. When I put it in four-wheel drive, I just took my time coming home because I'm old school. You know, it may take me a little longer to get there, but I'm going to get there. Learning behavior. So the first thing I wanted to cover was, <laughs> I'm sorry, Jason, picking on you. But Claude and I, we were talking back and forth. And one of the things that come up was... I mentioned to him that I have some really, really good mechanics that will correct me in a heartbeat. And that is 110% what I want, right? This channel, I'll be the first one to tell you, I am not the smartest man on the block. I am not the best mechanic out there. I'm probably not in the top 10 of the best mechanics in our area, right? Claude is a good mechanic. He's been doing it all of his life. And I've learned a lot from him. You know, it's not my forte, but I can do it. And I will do it when it comes to having work come through the shop. 
<clears throat> excuse me. But what I got talking to him about was that if I'm doing something wrong or there's a better way to do it, my guys, you guys on the channel will be the first ones to correct and point that out. Because the ultimate goal of this channel is to teach you guys out there that are you know do-it-yourselfers or just getting into the business or trying to learn to do it the right way, right? So we don't want to teach you the wrong way. We want to teach you the right way. And you're not the only ones getting taught, all right? You guys are teaching me, especially you, Jason. I had never had this policy in place until you and I talked back and forth about it and that was compression you remember when we dragged them four pieces of equipment home and end up with poor compression and you're like why didn't you just try it there that the way you have it set up is if a customer shows up with something you do a compression check on it right there before they unload it and I told Claude, I said, you know what? That is a good policy to have in place. Rule number one, compression check before that comes off the trailer. And now, Jason, we carry a compression tester right in the trucks. So if we're doing pickup, before we load it on that trailer, we try it. And that way we can show the customer. You know, you're going to have to pay 40 bucks because we come out to get it. But if we take it back to the shop, we're going to have sad news for you because you don't have enough compression to run that engine, right? So I'm also learning. But it goes back to the video. I told Claude, I said, we're going to leave out doing compression and spark test. And I want to see... Because he said that, oh, nobody will say anything. I said, I can't tell you right now. Minimum. Jason, I knew you would say something. And I even teased you with a spark plug. And that was all in fun. But I showed Claude. Because he, we got together later that afternoon. And I said, see, I told you. The, these guys, I have... A wide range of experience from really good super mechanics that know the ins and outs in the right way to do-it-yourselfers that are trying to learn the right way so when I said laugh my ass off not at you Jason it was a thing between Claude and I but we did it we had 94 on it but we we actually checked it right there at the guy's property. He wasn't that far away anyways, you know, three miles from us. So we, we checked it, and it had 94. So I said, all right, it's got 94, so it's above 90. I mean, it'll run at 80, but 90 is good. And end up having water in the, the carburetor. It built up in the actual bowl itself. Now, when the snowblower when he first engaged the snowblower claude has a tendency of running things i i'm just the opposite if i'm mowing the yard or i'm with my zero turn if i'm snow blowing if i'm i don't care what it is i got the engine at full throttle you know whether i'm actually in the grass yet or whether i'm just going to the grass once she starts she's full throttle until I get ready to get done mowing and then I'll take it, I'll idle it down and I'll let it just sit there and cool down a little bit and then shut it off. But he he starts it at just above an idle and to let it work through the system. So I just wanted to bring that up because I wanted you guys to know that I'm learning from you guys as well. And what you guys have to say uh, means a lot to me and don't worry you aren't going to hurt this old fart feelings I have thick skin I'm a north country boy <laughs> but that's where we're at with that so I thought today we talk about 
how do you guys take care of your generators and what's your procedure with them and when I say taking care of your generators I mean your home generators or your shop generators now what we recommend to our customers is just go out and start it at least once a month once a month and let it run for four or five minutes and then shut the fuel off and let it run itself completely dry and then when you put it away you know the fuel is shut off the carburetor is empty but the biggest thing that I see with generators they're, they're probably the most neglected thing out there and that is they sit in the back of somebody's garage and never be seen until there's a need and they're talking like with this storm we got last night they're talking possibly two three days before they can get everything back up and going again but I can remember back in the ice storm in what was it 97 but we were out, we were without power for 27 28 days where we had to run generators But what are you telling your customers and if you guys are do-it-yourselfers and homeowners and stuff how are you taking care of your generators if you have one maybe you have a standby that's automatic that takes care of itself but the biggest thing that we tell people is you have to have a procedure set up in place now I know Jason pointed it out the right way is to have a qualified electrician come in and you have like if you need a generator there's a block system where you take it out and put it in and that shuts the power off to the pole and when I say pull I mean the transmission line you know where National Grid whatever your power company is because you want it so that wherever they come in you have a main breaker what they call the main and for most of us up in this area we just shut the main off and then start up our generators and then plug them into the system and we're going unless we have a standby a standby senses the power does the switch and then starts up on its own and the nice thing about a standby is they're usually set so they start and shut off once a month just to you know they have a regular maintenance regular routine that it does and it's worry free to a certain extent you know but you still have to do service work on it like change the oil oil filter after so many hours run time but when you start talking to standby generator you're talking I mean we can get the gen we're a generac dealer we can get the generac standbys but we don't feel comfortable enough doing the electrical part of it getting it wired into somebody's system doing our own is something totally different but for somebody else no we're not doing it you need a certified electrician that knows exactly what they're doing to do it the correct way but I know most of the generators we see we don't see them until something like what happened last night where everybody lost power here around 8 30 9 o'clock and they've been out trying to get the generator going that they haven't touched in five six years and they wonder why they can't get it to run and most of them are running you know ethanol fuel in their generators which makes it even worse because now it's drawing moisture and most of them don't do the policy of shut the fuel off and let the carburetor drain out they just leave it like it is and when they shut it off they shut it off and you know in front and that just you know compounds things I had another shop give me a call yesterday and want to know if we had any of the old you know the home light and Coleman they both are made pretty much by the same company but they come with a plastic tank whereas the other ones are metal and he had two Generax over there that both had wore holes through the actual metal tanks 
and he was looking to see if we had a plastic tank that he could put onto his customers, get them going again. And I said, no, we had everything cleaned up here, you know, last year. I said, we've got one metal tank out there, but it's probably going to be about the same shape as what you're dealing with right now. So that's another thing you have to be aware of. So as of right now, you can see there are two different takes here on the videos. This is, it's right around noon and we got the phone internet back. So I'm going to upload this video from this morning for the weekday. And I'm looking forward to seeing your comments and stuff on your generators and stuff. And what you're telling your customers and what you guys that are part of the channel that are working on your own stuff what kind of a maintenance do you have for your generator if any all right so thanks so much for watching again thank you for all you guys do and we'll catch you tomorrow